The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Well then, Bunthropology. Yes. Which, just to be clear, is the study of Bunny. <laughs> um, it's homework time once again on the Pope on Film podcast. Yes, it is. <laughs> People of the internet, your attention, please. Cease your dabbing and pay attention! Each week, the Citadel of Steve's convenes, and through the fiery ritual of carousel, a piece of homework is chosen. Homework that will hopefully better the lives of our listeners, nay, dirty liberals everywhere. Yes. And this week... We continue last week's discussion on supposedly fair and balanced documentaries. Yes. Very a true fair and balanced. Yeah. A true documentary. A true documentary is impartial. A true documentary does not pick sides. That is correct. But last week we had a pretty good discussion about documentaries that were in reality one-sided hatchet jobs. Germs. And again, I, jobs. I blame Michael Moore. Yes, I blame Michael Moore too. So, for example, there's Bill Maher's 2008 documentary, Religious. Oh, or I... as it's more well-known, Bill Maher shits on Christians for an hour 45. Oh, I fucking hate that movie. I hate Bill that documentary, Moore. and so many other atheists are really into it. They think it's great. Uh, and, like, have you ever seen it? Yes. Yes. Yes, I have. Well, yeah, okay, you must have, because it sounds like you have the same opinion that I do. That, that yeah. I, It's like an hour and 45 minutes of him talking to the stupidest Christians in the world, which mm, it's got some charm, you know? but. Like real Christians who have a real point of view and who could speak about their religion are so much fucking funnier. Yeah, no, you I've know? totally seen it. But Bill Maher didn't want to put the work in. The the thing is, is that I I believe in atheism until I see other atheists. Yeah. It's the same way with professional wrestling. I like professional wrestling until I see other professional wrestling fans. <laughs> I love professional wrestling. Professional wrestling is amazing, and suddenly there's a 350-pound man in front of me going, oh, yeah, did you see the last pay-per-view? And I'm like, okay, I just tapped out. I'm done. I'm done yeah. with wrestling. You just ruined wrestling for me. Thanks mm -hmm. for that. But, but it, Bill Maher is just a smug little shit. Yeah. And he says things that you agree with in a way where you wish you didn't. Yes. You know, like I be, I I agree with atheists until I see athe atheists make fun of Christians. Like mm -hmm. there's a difference between just not believing and going I'm making fun of you cuz you do believe. I I wish I could be Christian. You've got a built-in <laughs> bad guy who you can blame for all of your troubles. Yeah. If you're in a bind, you can just say, well, I'm going to pray on it. Like, yeah. I wish I was Christian. I wish I could believe in all of this. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. That'd be a godsend. Mm -hmm. I loved going to church. I loved going to church. Yeah. God. Going to church every Sunday, like, live tweeting all of the nonsense. Mm -hmm. That was so much fun. Uh, I but like... Like I said on the last show, I, I only start with the ones who start. You yeah. know, if you want to start and start telling people that something is God's will, like the hurricanes or um, somebody else shouldn't do something, you know, or somebody else is wrong for how they think or anything like that. We have a fundamental problem now. And and you may very well be getting mocked at some point. Yeah. You know, but other than that, I've, I've met some Christians who are completely fine and I would be happy with a million of those in my society. Yeah. 
You know? Some of them are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, oh my God, you want to not agree with Bill Maher, is what I'm saying. Yes. And hey, Bill Maher, you're not allowed to say the N word. No. Jesus Christ. Good God. That was, that was. <clears throat> it's upsetting. That it's upsetting. was definitely wrong usage. Yeah. Fuck. Bill Maher's religious documentary was in no way fair and balanced. See? Tying it in with everything else. No, then not at all. The, and that's, that's my problem I had with it. Yeah. Then there's the outstanding crock of shit called Super Size Me. Yes. So, um, Morgan Spurlock, first off, he successfully killed supersizing. Yes. In all McDonald's restaurants. You can't supersize anything anymore. Really? Because now McDonald's is forced to act like they care about health. They, <laughs> I am so pissed off. I could get a soda the size of my torso. Yes. Mm -hmm. So much fries. All of the fries. God damn, I miss that shit. <laughs> no one has ever been able to replicate Morgan Spurlock's quote unquote experiment and get the same results. Yes. Or, as I like to call it, Morgan Spurlock is a pussy. <laughs> I'm sorry, but, oh, I'm going to eat nothing but McDonald's for a month. Oh, no, it's day two and I'm near death. It's like, bitch, yeah. please. Mm -hmm. Bitch, please. I ate nothing but McDonald's and Domino's pizza for seven years and I called it college. <laughs> Although, if you get the chance... Watch Super High Me. Yes, I have seen that too. I have seen Super High Me. That was a lot more fun. <laughs> yeah, it's a good rebuttal to the nonsense of Super Size Me. Mm -hmm. Then there is the Schools in Crisis documentary Waiting for Superman. Waiting for Superman is a documentary all about how public schools are failing and charter schools are the way to go. They're going to save everybody. Uh, Charter schools are amazing. Basically, Betsy DeVos porn. Yes. Betsy DeVos jills, jills off mm -hmm. to the documentary Waiting for Superman. The thing that I love that, that, that's amazing about this documentary is they say, look at this charter school. They have a 98% success rate. The average, uh, uh, the average grade is is an A+. plus? Isn't that amazing? Yeah, the documentary doesn't tell you that if a kid gets bad grades, he's just kicked the fuck out. Because mm -hmm. they can do that because it's a charter school. Yeah. They don't tell you that crap. And then, of course, the worst offender of all is the recent 2016 documentary Reverend Steve, The Man Who Never Masturbates. Yes. I have some sad news about that documentary. <laughs> Might not have been 100% accurate. Yes. Is all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Married for as long as I have. And, uh, yeah. That's but I, I'm but I, I pictured that as, as such a good Marvel superhero, like Daredevil, the man without fear. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. Reverend Steve, the man who never masturbated. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm I'm working on the indie comic book right now. Yeah. But when you're talking about evil, twisted, one-sided gotcha documentaries, then the first one that comes to mind is the ridiculously muckraking 2003 brutal, nasty hatchet job, Martin Bashir's. Living with Michael Jackson. Yes. Now, here's the thing about Michael Jackson. Some people might have a problem with this. Probably because society doesn't work this way. But here it goes. I hate Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. He's a creepy weirdo who dangled his infant son from a balcony, who spent the last few decades in ass-backwards countries that are so far behind the rest of the world that Michael Jackson was still a big deal. 
Yeah. He's uh, creepy and he had uh, sleepovers with the uh, kids and I don't like him. Right. But I love his music. <laughs> and society doesn't work that way. You're not supposed to hate an artist, but still like the artist's art. Yes. It, and it's, and it's tough, but you know, like, yeah, I, 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 I like some of the works of Roman Polanski. Yes. And I, I think he's a huge shit bag. I have never watched the fearless vampire killers. Neither though. have I. There's just something about that movie that every time I see the preview, it just creeps me out. It gives me like a like a cold, tingly feeling. Well, not sure why. That's good. <laughs> yeah, but not in a good way. More in like a the guy who owned the bike shop in Different Strokes sort of way. Yeah, that that sort of feeling like, oh shit, this could turn into a snuff movie at any moment. Yes, it could turn into a snuff film. Like blood sucking so, freaks. You watch blood yes. sucking freaks, and it's like this literally could turn into a snuff film at at, at any second. So here's some cases in point. Number one, Miley Cyrus. Yes. I fucking hate Miley Cyrus. Okay. But did you know she did an entire album with the Flaming Lips? No. Yeah. Yeah. It goes to show you that she must uh, smoke a lot of stuff. If she recorded an entire album with the Flaming Lips, <laughs> there's one song that is dedicated to all of the pets in her life that have died, and it's fucking beautiful. <laughs> And so, like, I look at Miley Cyrus and I'm like, there's nothing there for me. There's, it, it, I hate you. I don't like you. There is nothing there for me. But then when I see the Flaming Lips go, we are going to make an album with Miley Cyrus. That's when I go, okay, there's definitely something in Miley Cyrus that I didn't see before. Yes. I'm willing to be like a, like a, like a, to put my hatred of Miley Cyrus apart from my consumption of Miley Cyrus's art and see what happens. I hate all of Miley Cyrus's yeah. music, but that album is pretty fucking good. But, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's a matter of age or something like that. Um, like, I could, I could give Miley Cyrus a pass, you know? Yep. My, Miley Cyrus has only ever reached the level of asshole I believe. Yeah. Okay. She does yep. a lot of really asshole stuff. Yes. I find that quaint. Okay. Yeah. Where, where so many other people of a, a Miley Cyrus ilk. Okay. Ilk are flat out morally reprehensible, disgusting people. Like the Kardashians or Justin Bieber, you know, just just horrible human scum. Yeah. So that when Justin I Bieber, so that when somebody so that when a celebrity now is just an asshole, it's kind of charming. Yeah. Yeah. You know, no, it's a sense. it's a throwback. To better days. Speaking of, like, maybe it's my age. I have never bought a Beyonce album. Yeah. I have never cared about Beyonce. I'm not 100% sure why she's, like, the queen and I should be absolutely in love with her. Yeah. I felt that that was something like, okay, maybe that's just before my time. Yeah, Maybe that's an Emerald thing and not necessarily a Steve thing because I don't understand the love of Beyonce. And it's like, I, I, I don't hate her. I just don't care. I just do not care. Beyonce never comes into my universe. But uh -huh. then she released her last album, Lemonade, and it features a duet with Jack White of the White Stripes. <laughs> and I'm like, God damn it, White Stripes. You're going to make me care about Beyonce. <laughs> Damn it. Because again, just like Miley Cyrus. Okay, well, if if Jack White's like, I'm excited to do a song with Beyonce. Then it's like, okay. 
Fine. I'll try Beyonce out. Yes. You got me. Congratulations, queen of all music. Yes. Whatever. So I hate Michael Jackson, but I love his music. And this documentary, which was introduced by uh, Baba Wawa on U.S. television, just to show the importance of the documentary. Mm Mm-hmm. It gives me mixed emotions, this documentary that we have watched for homework, because number one, this documentary just proves what everyone already assumed about Michael Jackson, that he's a weirdo creepo uh, that uh, is inappropriate with children and he's a total weirdo creep. So that's number one. So now exhibit Q. Um, This shit is massively unfair. (laughs) Remarkably unfair. Yeah. Yeah, it's so unfair. It's especially when you, especially when you consider, you know that when they were shopping, which is a, a, an amazing thing. Yeah, you, you know Michael Jackson bought him something. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, absolutely. He yeah. just would have. That's how he is. Yeah. Probably bought everyone on the freaking crew something. And then Martin Bashir turns around and says, Michael Jackson spent a million dollars at that one store. How dare he? It's his money. I, I, yeah. I, I, I found it in, I found it very interesting in a perverse, sick way. You know? Yeah. That makes sense. You know, like. That like, makes sense with a lot of Michael Jackson's output just like i how i used to be horrified whenever i would get caught watching uh lifestyles of the rich and famous oh god who, who, what was that guy's name uh what was shit. his name um lifestyles of the rich and famous yes oh god damn it why you got to do this to me buddy he was famous for a moment damn it he was a good sport with things, so he would occasionally have on professional wrestlers yeah. that were trying to be, like, a big deal. So, like, the Million Dollar Man was on Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. He wasn't rich. Right. That was just WWE trying to sell their lie. But still, like, he was like, I have no problem with this. So, Million Dollar Man. Is it we're here Roger at John Manson. or Reggie or... I'm not looking it up because I'm not spending. Okay. I'm not putting effort into this, but let's God try. Let's try to get past it. My point was. Okay. My point I don't know was if I can get past it. When I would Just watch it, it, it would it would be like you people have way too much money. Nobody should have this money. Nobody should be able to have this money, and that goes for Michael Jackson too. Michael Jackson should not have that much money, where he could buy a fucking sarcophagus. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But he does have his money, so go ahead and shop. What else do you do with money? Oh, God damn it. It's on the tip of my tongue, buddy. Ah. Welcome to the Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. I'm your host. <laughs> Listen, <no. laughs> um, let me tell you what this documentary reminds me of. You know, we got a saying here in Oklahoma. Yeah. Uh, this documentary is crazier than a one-legged cat peeing in a shit-stirring contest. <laughs> People say that all the time here in Oklahoma. Yeah. That's how they greet each other. I have it embroidered on a pillow. Robin Leach! Robin Leach! Jeannie just got it. For the win! <laughs> Robin Leach! Yes. Yes! It's on the tip of my freaking tongue! And how can we forget that? Because his name was so fitting for that show. Yes. Because the whole show was him leeching off of rich people. Yeah. Or fake people in the the world of the WWF. Yeah. So this gotcha documentary, Living with Michael Jackson, it's on YouTube, is the sinister brainchild of so-called journalist Martin Bashir. Yeah. This fucking guy. 
This guy was a BBC reporter doing odd stories and the occasional interview. Then in 1995, he got a one-on-one lengthy sit-down interview with Princess Diana. And he decided, hey, I can make a name for myself by taking Princess Diana the fuck down. (laughs) Or in the words of uh, the one Lucha Underground character that I hate so much. Martin Bashir took Princess Diana to Slam Town. <laughs> took her to Slam Town. His interview was literally like, we're here with Princess Diana, humanitarian, legend, goddess, <laughs> creator of all things good. Let's talk for 45 minutes about your failed marriage until you cry. <laughs> His interview focused solely and harshishly on her failed frickin' marriage. She cried a bit. Suddenly, fucking Martin Bashir is a household name in England. Yes. Hmm, but how can Martin Bashir be a household name worldwide? I know, by ruthlessly taking down planet Earth's biggest star, Michael freaking Jackson. Yes, but now at the same time, you've got to admit, at that time and place, that was the documentary that we all wanted. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So this week we are doing Living with Michael Jackson, the documentary, because last week we discussed the 2006 documentary Jesus Camp. And I started off the discussion of the film by shockingly, at least for me, coming to the defense of fundamentalist Christians. Yes. Because uh, the makers of the documentary Jesus Camp said, oh, this is a 100% impartial, down the road, both sides documentary. Yeah, Yeah, impartial my ass. (laughs) Impartial my ass. Let's pray. Okay, insert sinister music here, guys. You know? Yes. It Like, they filmed it impartially, but then in the editing room, they turned it into the, hey, fundamentalist Christians are idiots. <laughs> so, like, the whole thing is just unfair. So, with that in mind, Living with Michael Jackson came about basically because Martin Bashir said, hey, Michael Jackson, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan, and I think you've been maligned in the press and in the media. And I want to help you. Please let me help you. If you could just give sign this piece of paper that gives me unrestricted access to your entire life for almost a year. I can finally tell the story that you want to tell because you are a genius. (laughs) Mark followed Michael Jackson around for eight months and he captured some pretty batshit events in his life. But literally... Michael Jackson eventually countered with his own documentary, which showed like that sinister interview at the end of the film. Yeah. Where Martin Bashir finally takes down Michael Jackson and makes him cry and admit all these things. Oh, I wasn't married to that woman. It was just a marriage of convenience. I was paying her so I could have children. Wah! Yeah. So, so, so Michael Jackson released like the full unedited video. And of course, the interview begins with. Thank you for sitting down with me, Michael Jackson. I think you are the greatest person in the history of ever. Yeah. You are a genius and a brilliant man, and I want to suck your Michael Jackson dick right here. <laughs> but first, I guess, I should just answer, ask some questions that uh, I guess the, the producers wanted me to ask. Why are you freaky with kids, you pervert? But how could he not ask those questions? Yeah. You know? Yeah. How yeah. how could he not? I mean, that is what everybody wants to know about Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah. It's just not fair. It's just not fair. He, he's doing such horrible editing on this. It's just yeah. messed up. No, so, I'll agree. Totally. Yeah. yeah. So some of the bad shit events in this documentary. Basically, Michael Jackson is still a child. He's got Peter Pan syndrome. He lives in a literal theme park. Yes. He's had a ridiculous amount of plastic surgery. Uh, doy. Uh-huh. Michael Jackson occasionally goes shopping where he'll spend a million dollars like it's fucking nothing. He dresses his kids in ridiculous costumes in public to avoid paparazzi. I'm going to start doing that. Michael uh, uh, Maxwell will be wearing a giant wolf's head yeah. every time we go outside because the paparazzi, they're just vicious and I need to protect my family. Mm-hmm. 
He and dangles. Why are you putting them in a documentary? Yeah, yeah. He's putting. He's dangling infant. His infant from the balcony of a hotel. Not good. Yeah. Then he invites disadvantaged poor kids to his ranch where they have sleepovers. Real pervy, like. Yeah. And the big final. In, and then. The kids are like, oh, Michael Jackson's not doing anything pervy because he lets me sleep in his bed all by myself and he sleeps on the floor. Yeah, like that takes away the creepiness factor. Yeah. Go ahead and sleep on my bed, uh, nine-year-old disadvantaged child. I'll just be sleeping here on the floor watching you. <laughs> that's not That's not creepy at all. Yeah. Then there's the big final interview where Michael Jackson, where Martin Bashir doesn't stop until Michael Jackson's in fucking tears. And here's the amazing part. Here's the part that I loved about this Michael Jackson documentary. Martin Bashir literally just railroads Michael Jackson and just gives him so much of the fucking business that by the end of the documentary, Michael Jackson is in tears. And just like the Pixar film Inside Out, not too many people know this, Michael Jackson's tears are candy. <laughs> We didn't realize that until Michael, until Martin Bashir had the, the, the gall to prove it as fact. Yeah. Science. <laughs> anyway, Martin Bashir is a man with a motive, and that motive is destroying Michael Jackson. It, to be fair, Michael Jackson is a creepy freak, and yeah. this documentary really ruined like the last couple of years of Michael Jackson's life, like the last decade of Michael Jackson's life, and he became like a recluse because of this documentary. But um, but yeah, yeah, the damage was done. Good job, Martin Bashir. But now at the same, well, first, okay. If you don't want your kids seen in public, okay, don't and I understand kids. you want to take them to the zoo and things like that. You want to be able to do things with your kids. Fine. I'm okay with the masks, okay, but don't put them in a document documentary then. Yeah. You know, you let people take the pictures that you can't help them from taking. Yeah. And you have you don't put them in a fucking documentary. Yeah. Good Christ! Do you ma imagine trying to get a get fed a bottle with that fucking thing over your face when you're an oh, infant? God. Yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. what's wrong with you? Do not be doing this right now. Feed the baby before or after, and like none of Michael Jackson's answers were helping anything. Yep. You know, like um. Yeah, you only had you only had two plastic surgeries. Nobody yeah. in the universe believes that. Nobody in the universe believes you spontaneously turned white. And nobody believes that these children just happened to turn out white, even though the mother was also black. Yeah, it does not work like that, Michael. It does just doesn't work like that. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he totally paid for those kids. Yeah. The whole, like, I'm oh, I'm Michael Jackson. I can't be pervy with kids. I'm married. Yeah, no, you're not married. Yeah. Don't try for one second to say that you're, like, a happy married family man. Mm -hmm. I love Michael Jackson's song, They Don't Really Care About Us. Because it really, like, I, I was taken aback for a long time. Like, all I want to say is that they don't really care about us. Who is us? Oh, crap. You think you're black. <laughs> oh, my God. White Michael Jackson is still a black man. I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around this. <laughs> but, oh, my God, you're singing about uh, uh, police brutality against you fellow black people. Oh my goodness. Now I get it. You're black. I had no idea. I had no idea. <laughs> but yeah, no, I guess technically you're black or you were black. Good for you, Michael Jackson. Yeah. I love that song. I have the race. I have the racist version on my phone before they changed it. Yeah. Cause in the original version of that song, he said some nasty things about Jews. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a, there's an anti Jew version of 
Michael Jackson's They Don't Really Care About Us that has some really nasty things about Jews. So then the song comes out and people are like, Michael Jackson is racist. And Michael Jackson came out and said, guys, come on. I'm not racist. I can't be. All of my lawyers are Jewish and they're great people. And it's like, no, just tap out, Michael. Just tap out. (laughs) Just no. There is no good way out of this for you. (laughs) So he changed the song. So if you ever hear that song, there's like an 80, 90 percent chance that you're hearing the changed non-racist version. Yeah. But I have the racist version on my phone. (laughs) Because I find that hilarious. Not because I hate Jews. Jews are wonderful people. It's just I love it when celebrities are taken down a peg. Uh-huh. Schadenfreude. <laughs> In fact, that was going to be Maxwell's original name. Yeah? Schadenfreude Galindo, yeah. That would be a great choice. Yeah. Schadenfreude Thispin Galindo was going to be his name. <laughs> his middle name was going to be Thispin. Because I found a pen. And I said, look, it's this pen. Uh That would be a great name. This pen. Schadenfreude, this pen Galindo. I still don't know why my wife said no. (laughs) Would have been great. I agree. That That would be a great name. Thank you. Yes. And that is it for homework this week. Unless you have anything else. Do you have anything else? Well, his even his answers about... Michael Jackson talks in circles a lot, you know, yes, he does. and a lot of the times what he starts out saying is contradictory to what he finishes saying. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, well, they didn't just invent plastic surgery for Michael Jackson. Yeah. So why are you lying about it? It's not, <laughs> yeah. this is not a thing to be lying about it. Joan Rivers never felt the need to lie about it. Yeah. Did, did Phyllis Diller. Yeah. Ridiculous. You know, so why are you lying about it? And he would do the same thing with, with the kids. Where He would be like, oh, I would sleep on the floor, but, but then they would come into the bed. You still get to the bed eventually. And you're sleeping with strangers with strangers' kids. You're okay with your kids sleeping with Barry Gibb. Barry Gibb. <laughs> Barry Gibb. I wouldn't be okay with that either. <laughs> so I think that's. Uh, I, I think that's where I need to finish. <laughs> All right. Well, that is it for homework this week, gang. You all get A's, unless you didn't do the homework, in which case you all get F's. Anyway, we sincerely hope and pray that your hearts, minds, and pores have all been suitably opened. Ah, but don't just assume that you're getting out of here that easily, muchacho. Don't forget next week's homework, and for next week, because quote unquote president trump is literally seconds away from ushering in a hideous nuclear holocaust yes we will be dusting off a slightly old chestnut from vice news all right back back when they were cool post hbo contract when they were just posting their own stuff on their own website vbs.com in 2010 a small group of vice quote unquote reporters um snuck their way into North Korea and got a tour of all of North Korea. And they made an hour-long documentary about their travels. And yes, it's seven years old, but I thought that now might be a good time to watch it, seeing as our quote-unquote president uh, wants to literally nuke an entire country of people. Yes. I I've might have I've might have seen this. I've watched some things on North Korea before because it's fucked up. I saw it seven years ago, and it scared the crap out of me. And I remember seven years ago saying, wait a second, where the hell even is North Korea? Apparently, I need to be afraid of them. (laughs) I don't even know where it is, and apparently they're seconds away from killing me. Oh my god, Natasha, you need to watch this documentary on North Korea. Don't worry, though, it's a really fun documentary. There's a lot of weird stuff in it and drinking, but but trust me, you need to watch this. It's not a record. 
a documentary. It's a Vice documentary. Yes. And you can find on archive.org, I had it. I don't, I might have accidentally thrown it out, but I had it. You can get off of archive.org's Kim Jong Il's movie book. He wrote a movie, he, he wrote a book about filmmaking. Really? Yes. Hmm. Hmm. Really I was like, bizarre. I, I got to get that. I never got around to reading it, though. <laughs> yeah. Huh. But I've got to have that. Yeah. So next week's homework is The Vice Guide to North Korea. It's on YouTube. Might even still be on Netflix, as far as I know. So that is next week. So join us next week, then, for more homework with the Pope on Film Podcast. Yes. <laughs> Thank you.